show you how to groom the rear assembly of the dog. Um, when you look at the structure, you'll see that we have, this is the buttocks, this under here is the stifle, and this is what we call the hock, this right here. The dog drives with his rear, and when he moves, he pushes with the rear. You need a nice, muscular, wide rear to push. The dog is bred to dig, and while he's busy with his front feet, he has to be pushing forward with the rear also. And then when he moves, it has to be, it has to be muscular. We don't want to narrow, but when you put your hand around this, we call is affectionately called the ham. You need to feel a big handful of muscle, and that's the impression that you want to give that the dog is well muscled up in the back. As the dog moves. He pushes off, and you want to see the back pad. If the dog is moving correctly, and he's put together right in the rear, his hocks won't be too long. And as he moves, this will come straight back, and then this one will come straight back. And as you, as you look at the rear, the hocks should be parallel. If the dog is not structured properly, he could be, if this bone goes in like this, and it moves, and the, and the bone is shaped like this, that's what you call uh, cow hock. Okay, if, it's, if it turns in like this, this is open hock. So, Either way, as a dog walks, he loses momentum, he'll tire more quickly, and so the dog structurally should be put together correctly. So as a judge, as a judge will judge your dog, he will look for correct structure. If you don't have correct structure, completely correct, and you want to give the impression of correct structure, you can groom. We are fortunate to have furnishings which can be trimmed in a certain way to give the idea that the dog is structured correctly. And grooming is an enhancement of the bone structure and the muscles. So when, when a judge is touching, he's actually feeling for what the Yes, yes. As a judge comes back over your dog's rear, he'll put his hands like this and he'll Put the dog down like this to see how he drops. He'll come down here. He'll feel a bend of stifle. And he'll feel, yes, he wants to see that these, he can actually with his fingers feel that these, that these, that these hocks are parallel. That they're not, that they're not, the foot's not twisted this way. He'll find out. A lot of times the judge will go like this and just drop the dog. And that way, that way you see, does this dog drop true? In other words, his feet need to be flat when he drops his feet his legs would twist, yeah. probably. His feet would be his feet yeah, you might see like yeah. this, a foot turned this way, if it wasn't true. Because as you position the dog on the table, the handler positions the dog on the table, it can, he can put the feet in the proper place. But if you lift the dog and you drop him like that, he should drop true. Okay. So what you're going to do is enhance the correct structure of the rear and the tail. Okay. Um, we want a well set on tail. This little bone in here is called this. Back, this is of course the back. But when you come to the end of the loin, you have a little bone in here called the croup. Okay. If a dog has a low tail set you'll have a long croup. Okay, this bone will be longer 
And so therefore, when the dog's tail starts, it'll start down there. Okay? If you have a low tail set, this is a low tail set, to groom that, you have to fill in hair here. If you have a correct high tail set, you won't feel a drop off there. And you probably won't need to leave any hair in here. But you can feel it. If the dog drops off here and the tail comes like this, you have a low tail set. Dogs with low tail sets have a hard time getting their tail all the way up. And the tail is supposed to be carried slightly curved, slightly curved like this over the back. When you see, when you see someone position their dog on the, on the table, they will hold the dog's tail slightly like this. The dog really should be able to hold his own tail. But sometimes when they're hard, this is called hard stacking the dog. Sometimes when they're hard stacked, the dog will, um, the dog will just get a little tense or a little bored or a little tired and the tail goes like this a little bit. So we position them for the judge like this. This is called hard stacking. Okay. The tail, I'm going to start, I'm going to start with the tail, uh, the actual grooming of the tail. The hair on the tail should be stripped. You can use a stone, and you know the technique for stripping. You can pull the longest hairs this way. The whole goal is to make a shape that looks like a carrot, so that when the dog holds his tail up, it looks like an upside down carrot. Wider at the bottom to a point at the tip. I like to make a tail flatter on the back. If the tail's well set, I like this to be smooth on the back with more of the hair built up to the front. This also helps the appearance of giving your dog a higher tail set because the hair will come to the front. Okay. If a dog's got a nice tail set and you take all this hair off in here, you can accentuate and show the wide rear and the tail set. If you leave this all shaggy, you, you give a wrong impression. If you leave too much hair here, if you leave too much hair in these two places, you'll make the dog look narrower in the rear. It won't have as broad, I call this a spanky butt. You won't have that broad spanky butt. If you leave a lot of hair back, too much hair back here, I don't know if you can see because this has been trimmed, but if you can see this, if you leave too much hair back here, you lose that nice wide appearance. You see that? But if it's done properly and it's stripped down tight, you get that nice broad, well muscled up rear. Okay, the tail is stripped off the top. You can use a stone. If you have a big bushy tail, you may want to take your stripping knife and you may want to actually comb the tail with the blade laying flat to take out the fuzzies. Because basically, everywhere on the dog, there is undercoat. If you have too much undercoat in the tail, you'll get the hair will be bushy, but you want this tail to be nice and smooth. Okay, so if you, if you comb this, I'm not stripping with this knife, I'm just combing the tail. I'm taking out the excess undercoat on the tail, which allows the hair, if you notice it, it'll lay, it lays much smoother. The fine knife also can be used. Undercoat taken out too. Oh yes, you need a you need a you need more hair. This is about this length. You need you need a good length on the front, but you'll notice it's shorter on the back. Now the sides it's longer. Sides it's longer, but this I trim this is trimmed down. You see how short that is. 
Okay, so which gives this a nice flat appearance, but the rest of it looks like a carrot. Okay. But you don't want these you don't want these wispies sticking out here like this. And the worst possible thing is that flag up here. Okay. So you achieve that look. You achieve that look by stripping the coat, stripping the coat off the tail, just like we would the back or any other part of the dog. And when you when you uh, when you go to do the back, you can also strip it. Now sometimes it's easier to sort of roll the tail up this way, take your stone and kind of pull this way. But I always pull the direction the hair grows. Pull it up this way. Strip off the back that way. Okay. And then you can also again, as I said, take your take your fine blade and rake out the lighter color here on his tail is the undercoat. And I think you can see how I'm taking that out, which will make the tail um, hair lie smoother. Okay? I know. Okay. Um, it is permissible to scissor some on the tail. Uh, the purist will never use the scissors. But sometimes you get these little funky hairs and they just you you can pick and pick and pick and sometimes you just can't get them just right. If you ever scissor the back of the tail, do it from the top to the bottom. If you come this direction, you'll miss the wispies on the side and when the dog shakes, the hair will be all wispy on the side. But for some reason, and I have took me a long time to figure this out, if you'll take the tail and you'll scissor it from the top down, the hair will lay better. If you do nothing but scissor the tail, you'll find that it'll begin to get real curly. I don't know why, but it happens. And um, so the back of the tail could be scissored off after you pull some hair. And you can trim that like this. Now, if you have a flag and you're trying to get rid of the flag, you can pull this hair forward like this and pinch the tail between the tips of your fingers like this. And you could actually scissor this this way to take that flag off. But remember, majority of it should be stripped. You only use the scissor uh, to finish it off, basically, to give a nice smooth look if you want to. OK. Mm -hmm. Can you see well? Up here? OK. Find the tip of the tail. Yes, yeah, sometimes, sometimes your dog looks like the tail is this long. But it, when you go like this, it's all hair. You really don't want to leave a lot of hair at the tip of the tail. You, the tip of the tail, the bone, is right here. And you shouldn't probably have more than maybe half an inch at the very most at the tip of the tail, unless you have a really too short tail. Some dogs can have actually a too short tail. And if that's the case, then you have to leave a little more. You can uh, trim it the same way at the tip. Or you can take, and you can strip it. But any, any, whatever way you do it, you should be stripping some. OK? All right. And in this area right here at the base of the tail, it's probably a little easier on the dog, a little less sensitive right in here to actually scissor that around this. I would take these scissors and I would carefully trim away. And this is for cleanliness so that, um, so that fecal matter doesn't catch on the, on the back end here. Now, the most important thing is that you only trim close in this area here. If you take it all out, and I have seen people actually use a clipper in this area, as the dog goes away from you, it looks like it has a giant headlight. So. <laughs> You don't really want that look. You want it to all sort of blend together. And I would strip in this direction, from the base of the tail to the side. I would strip 
this direction. Some people will strip it this way. But remember, hair grows in the direction it's stripped. And really, you want to give the impression of width. So you want to strip to the side. Some dogs are extremely sensitive back here, particularly the puppies, and they just have to be trained. And once they're used to it, it's not so bad. But the first time that you begin to strip on your puppy back here, he may move all over the table. If that's the case, and you need control, you can turn the dog this way and pull him right back up to you here. Pull the tail this way and come this way. If he still isn't behaving, I'm sorry, Casey. If he still is not behaving, you can literally pull him back off the table so he knows that you are going to have control and you're going to do this. I have literally taken puppies and hung them like this to strip. And once they know that you're going to do it, usually they'll cooperate. But it's the first time that you do it, they go, whoa, don't touch it back there. <laughs> oh, gee. First puppy trim. The first puppy trim starts at about between, oh, it was around eight weeks, but I don't actually strip this much on a puppy till it's closer to um, between four and six months, and I really start to, to strip back here. Um, up to that point, you can just take your scissors and keep it clean. Okay, so I'm stripping. I'm stripping in, the, in this direction. First puppy trim, 